Hello and welcome to the Crochet Business School podcast. I'm Kelly Thomas, the Crochet Profit Queen, and I'm going to show you how you can make a living from your crochet while avoiding the burnout and being able to make what you want and when you want. What is the most difficult part of writing crochet patterns? So writing patterns is not as difficult as you might think. You can keep the tech fairly simple. Um, selling you can do on social media, you can do it through SEO and being found on Google, which is not as difficult as you might think. There are plenty of crochets out there searching for new designs. All you've got to do is get in front of them and show them your pattern. And anything else is optional. You know, having crochet videos, that's optional. Having a website or a blog, optional. All you need is a Word document that you can turn into a PDF and a selling site that you can load it onto. And then you've got to come up with a nice name for it. You've got to take some nice pictures. The pictures can be tricky, but with practice is fairly easy because editing apps now, really easy. You can actually, thanks to AI, edit them automatically. And then you've got to write your descriptions which have to be found through search engines. You just need your keywords and learn how to write, you know, an informative but interesting description that is full of keywords. That can be tricky. That takes time to pick up and learn. And it's probably the most, the second most difficult part, I'd say, because your description for your pattern listing can get you sales through search engines. So it's really important that you get that right for, so you can make those sales while you sleep. And it doesn't depend on you to go out there posting on every Facebook group and using every Instagram um, hashtag you can think of. The most difficult part of writing crochet patterns, you know, speaking for myself, the most difficult part is dealing with myself. I am my own biggest enemy. And I suspect the same is true for a lot of other people, maybe you included, that you can be your own worst enemy. And I mean, I, self-sabotage can be a big thing. When you are working for yourself and you're doing this business thing all alone, the greatest enemy you have is your own mind. And it can really put the brakes on your business. When creating the design is easy, editing the design is not difficult, but oh, what a slog. I find the testing process particularly difficult, not because it's hard to find testers, not because my testers are difficult to deal with. They're often very, very friendly and very helpful. But I find it difficult because it's, it's hard to take the finding of the mistakes not take that personally. I, it's, it's kind of, um, I feel like I have to go on the defensive when mistakes are found and I, it takes me if, some self-control not to. But the whole point of the testing process is to find mistakes. You know, if, if designers were that perfect, mistakes were never made, there will not be a whole massive thing around testing. Every designer makes mistakes. Every designer, you know, makes typos and gets the number wrong uh, for a number of stitches in a row. Um, knows what they want to say, but don't write it down clearly so it's ambiguous. You know, these mistakes are all in there. But knowing how I feel about those mistakes being found, it puts me off starting the testing process. So I can have patterns written up ready to go for testing and sit on them for weeks on end because I detest the testing process. As necessary as it is and as useful as it is, hands up, I always find the testing process really useful. It makes my patterns a ton better. But oh, the feeling that it brings when those mistakes come in. And it makes me sit on things. And because I'm sitting on things, I'm not making the profit that I should be. 
And the only issue there is me. It's me doing that. I am my own difficulty. You know, sometimes I've just got to get on with it and get out my own way. But that's easier said than done. You know, it's, it is difficult to put our feelings aside and get done what we know has to be done. If we were in a nice five job working for an employer, we just get on and do it because we had no choice. But that's the thing about having your own business. You feel like you have the choice because it's yours. You're the only one who's going to be answerable to this process. You know, you don't have a boss sitting there waiting and going, if you don't get this done, I'm going to have you fired. That doesn't happen. You are your own boss. And so it does make you feel like you have the choice to sit there and not do the bits that you don't like, even if they're really necessary. And that's not a good thing. Having your own crochet pattern business can require some degree of you know, strong will and self-control. And I don't always win that battle. I could probably be a much more successful designer than I am if I just got out my own way. If I just got on and did the things that need to be done. Instead of picking and choosing the parts that I really like doing and leaving to one side the bits that I don't. Because at the end of the day, the only person it hurts is me. I've got downstairs at least three patterns waiting for me finishing up those edits and get them into the testing process. That's right now. I am doing it right now. And I've got to get out my own way. It will get done. And they will get out. But I've got to give myself a swift kick to do it. And really the biggest difficulty you will have is yourself. Whether that is yourself telling you that you couldn't possibly do that. You're not good enough a crochet to write your own patterns. Who'd want to buy those? You couldn't do that. The tech involved, imagine you doing all that tech and there must be coding and lots of technical bits in having your own website, your blog, uploading PDF patterns. Oh no, couldn't do that. You've got all these mind monkeys going around your head, making things feel far more difficult, far more complicated, far more scary than they actually are. Oftentimes, if you just get on and do it, it's really not that painful. And the same is true for me. I find the testing process difficult, but it lasts a couple of weeks. And at the end of the day, no real harm is done. It's just that my ego takes a bit of a dent. That I didn't pick up what looks like an obvious mistake once it's pointed out. But that's the whole point of the process. Testers expect to find problems. They expect to find mistakes and it's their job to correct them. That's why the testing happens. But you know, our brains just don't work that way. Our brains kind of magnify the issues until they feel like they're out of all proportion. And that's just not true. So, the most difficult part of writing crochet patterns is yourself. You've got to get out your own way and get those bits done. I promise you it's not as technical as you think. I promise you it's not as scary as you think. I promise you you are good enough to write your own crochet patterns. You can do it if you put your mind to it. You can do it if you believe in yourself and if you knuckle down and just get on with it. And this is why I created my membership, the Hookers Academy to help you through all this, to get past all those blocks that your mind are putting in your way and give you the support you need to write your own crochet patterns and start living that life that you dream of. Because writing crochet patterns can be very freeing for you and your lifestyle. Imagine being able to work part-time the hours that you want. Imagine getting control of your crochet back and make what you want when you want. You can have a crochet business where you are not a slave to your hook. Now, when you're selling what you make, 
you have to make what people order and you have to get those orders out in a decent amount of time. And it can feel like you've lost your control over what was a hobby. Because most people, you know, possibly you, you got into selling crochet because you love to crochet and you felt that having a business where you crochet would be amazing. So I think what you make, you lose control of this a bit. If you turn to crochet patterns, you get that control back. If you want to take the holidays off with the kids, you can. Your crochet patterns will continue to sell. The money will still come in. You can take a holiday and still have money coming in because that pattern that you wrote will sell over and over and over again. Once you've written it, it is available for sale all the time. You never have to rewrite it. The entire sales process is automated. And that's why it's worth getting past all these blocks. So that you can have that freedom, both for your time, you can make way more money with crochet patterns than you can selling what you make, and you get the freedom of your crochet back. You, you decide what you crochet and when. And it will feel like you have your hobby back that you loved and you're in control of it again. So if you are interested in Hooker's Academy, click the link beneath this podcast. And I can help you through all of this and give you the support you need. So thank you for listening. And I hope that you get out of your own way and pursue that crochet dream that you've been dreaming of. Make it a reality. Click that link and let's talk about it. So thank you for listening and I shall see you next time for the next episode. Bye for now.